Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video lesson, we're going to be starting our top down shooter series. So let's roll the intro and get right into it. So, if you downloaded the started project, open it up and you'll see kind of what we have in front of me. We have some basic things in here. In this video, we're going to be working on the player and getting the movement down. So you can see right here, if we bring down our rooms, we only have a room in it. I want to right click and say duplicate because we're going to be using a test room here. So let's call this room underscore test character. So inside here, let's make sure we go in this room and the only thing that should be in here is this in it object. Make sure we delete it. And then next we need to go into the room in it and find that in an object again double click and save variables and we need to tell it the room that we're going to go to and in our case it's going to be the test character room so now that that's set up we can close the init room and we can work on the room test itself so we're going to be doing the character so let's make sure we go to the objects and inside the player i'm going to right click and say create and make a new object and i'm going to call this one object so obj underscore character and what we want to do is we want to actually add the sprite. So we'll go to our sprites. And once again, all this is found in the description in the zip file. So in the sprites, we'll go to character and we'll go to body and we will just choose the first one. And now in our room test, let's make sure that we add this character into the room so that we do not forget to do it. Now back in our workspace, what we want to do is let me actually close the room here. Let's add a couple events. We'll add a create event. We need a step event. And then finally, we need a draw event. In the draw event, we will just have draw self and we're going to come back to this event in the end. Now, because we're using sprites from itch.io and open game art, we don't really have the correct image scale. And in this particular sprite, I need to upscale it by two. So to do that, I will use the image X scale and set it to two. And then I'll just set the Y scale equal to the image X scale, which will be set by two. I'll make a comment here at the top just so I know what I'm doing later on. The next thing we need to do is set up some movement variables. In here, we need to know the maximum speed. We also need to know the acceleration or the walk speed. And then we'll have a variable for our horizontal and vertical movement. And finally, because we're not using a state machine, I want to use a variable called frame speed, which is going to control how much we can actually animate. All right, so with our basic variables out of the way, let's go to the step event and let's actually start coding some of the movement code itself. So like I said, we're not coding a state machine, so I need a way to keep track of the frames for our animation. For this, I'm gonna use a variable called frame average and I'm just gonna set it to zero. Once again, I'll add the comment on the top so I know what I'm doing down the road. Now we're gonna be using the basic platformer code that we've seen everywhere. So we're just gonna go over this pretty quickly. The first thing I need to do is store the horizontal input. This would be either the left key or the right key. You can see here that I'm gonna be using the keyboard check and I'm gonna be using the D key and the A key. Normally what I would do is I would pull these out into global variables, but we won't do this for this project. The next thing I wanna do is set my frame speed to zero and we're gonna use this later on to control our animation. So let's just skip that for now. Now we need to know whether our player is pressing the left or the right key. And we can do this by checking the horizontal input. If the horizontal input does not equal zero, then we know that we are either pressing the left key or the right key. If we are pressing one of these keys, then we're gonna add some movement into our horizontal movement variable. What we're gonna do is we are going to add the horizontal input, which is either one or negative one, times our walk speed. So over time, this is gonna increment into a much bigger number. Because of that, we need to clamp it or we need to say that we cannot go past our maximum walk speed. And to do that, all we have to do is say the horizontal movement equals clamp horizontal movement to the negative of max speed, which is negative four, and then the max speed, which is positive four. So over time, if our horizontal movement is say five or six, we're gonna clamp it back and Game Maker will automatically scale that back. Now for our animation, because we are currently moving, I wanna make sure that I add one into my frame average and that I also increase my frame speed by whatever the absolute value of horizontal movement is. So what the absolute is doing is if horizontal movement is say negative three, absolute will, will turn this into a positive number. So no matter what, we can always work with positive numbers. So if we aren't pressing any keys, we need to fall into this else statement here. And what we need to do in this particular statement is if we aren't pressing any keys, then what we want to do is slow our player down. 
So the first check we want to do is we want to say, is our horizontal movement bigger than our walk speed? If it is, then our horizontal movement is going to be just taking away the walk speed itself. The next check we need to do is we need to say, is our horizontal movement less than the negative walk speed? And if it is less than the negative walk speed, then all we want to say is our horizontal movement is going to be added into that walk speed. And the final check that we need here is we need to say if we don't have any horizontal movement beyond our walk speed or horizontal movement less than our walk speed, all we want to do is set the horizontal movement to zero, which will eventually stop us. Now that we have some of the basic code done, we need to do the collisions. So underneath all of our if statements, we're going to check to see if we are going to meet the object solid based on the X and Y position plus or horizontal movement going left or right. If we are about to hit a solid object, we want to come into this if statement. Now inside this statement, we need to do a while loop. And for this while loop, we're going to say if we are not going to meet an object solid. So we could add a not symbol in front of that. And if not place meeting X plus horizontal movement. And what we want to do is change this to use a sign variable, which sign will take the horizontal movement and change it into a positive one or a negative one. So we're going to be skipping through one pixel at a time until we actually hit the object itself. So as we're skipping through, we'll change our X position to be plus equal sign horizontal movement. So once again, we're going to take our character and move them to the left or the right one pixel at a time until we hit the object solid. At the very end, because we're going to exit, we want to set our horizontal movement equal to zero because we are no longer moving and we should be against a solid object. And finally, after all these if statements, we can just add the X amount or the horizontal movement into our X position. All right, so that was actually a lot of code there. What we need to do is we need to do the exact same thing for a vertical movement. So I'm going to go up to the top here and I'm just going to copy everything and I will go right underneath and make a, a couple lines down here and paste it in. I'll go up to the, my top of my paste of code. I'll get rid of the frame speed because I don't need this. And instead of using horizontal input, we want to make sure that we use the vertical input. We are going to be checking the S key, which I'll be using for down and the W key. Now it's just a matter of going through and changing horizontal input to vertical input and then changing horizontal movement into vertical movement. For our collisions, we're not going to be checking with the horizontal movement. Instead, we're going to be checking the vertical movement. And we were going to do the same with the sign here, but we're going to change the horizontal movement to vertical movement. And we're going to make sure that we're changing the Y position corresponding to the vertical movement. Then finally, at the end, the vertical movement to the Y position itself. All right, so that was a lot of code. Let's make sure we save and hit F5. And let's see if we have any errors. Okay, so our game is loaded up. You can see that I'm moving around now and my character is animating, even though I don't want him to animate when I'm standing still. So let's work on that animation for now. Let's close our game. And what I want to do to clean some of this up, so I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to store everything inside a region. So I'll make sure that I have a region here for movement. And I'm going to indent everything that we just had here. I'll indent it one with my tab key, and then I'll use end region. And now I can come up here and I can just kind of minimize that to keep everything clean. Now, the next thing I said we're going to work on is our animation. So let's make a new region and let's actually call this frame speed. And make sure we end the region at the end. So in here, we're only increasing the frame speed every single time our character is moving. So we need to make sure that our frame speed is above zero. So we'll say if frame speed is bigger than zero. Otherwise, what do we want to do? Well, we basically just want our character to stop. So we'll make sure our frame speed is equal to zero and the image index, which is going to be the subframe, is going to be equal to zero as well. Now for the frame speed, we want to use a percentage based on our maximum speed. So I'll say the frame speed is going to be equal to frame speed divided by max speed. This will give us a number between zero and one, and it will actually give us a decimal so we can use that as a percentage. Down here at the bottom, all we need to do is set our image speed to equal our frame speed. So when we're not moving, our image, or sorry, our frame speed is set to zero, therefore our image speed is set to zero. 
when we are moving the frame speed itself is going to be divided by the maximum speed here and that will give us a percentage which then we can apply to the speed itself so let's hit f5 and let's see where we're at right now we're not moving so our character is moving if i hit the left key you can see he starts moving the right key up and down so we have our basic movement in here you can see it kind of goes a little fast when we go up and down but that's okay what we could do is we could easily clamp this if you wanted to clamp the frame speed between zero and one let's actually see what that would look like so we'll say clamp frame speed between zero and one because we don't want our frames to actually go higher than the speed itself and you can see that that would actually fix that issue itself so the one thing that we are missing here is our character cannot look left or right so let's close the game let's close this region and make a new one called facing and in this facing region it's going to be pretty simple all we're going to do is say if the x position is bigger than wherever our mouse x is then our image x scale is going to be two times negative one otherwise if our x position is less than the mouse x our image x scale is just going to be equal to two now I would probably pull these out in the variables so we're not doing the math anymore but all we're basically doing is flipping the x scale when our character is less than the mouse position which will make us point to left so if we hit f5 again you can see that when i drag my mouse over here he flips and then he can flip again going back and forth so we can walk around leaving our mouse kind of in the same position you can see that he's going around in a circle so the last thing to do in this actual room according to um, what we have set out here is if we go to the room we want to use the object solid to make sure that our collision is working so i'm just going to drag this out so that hopefully he will not pass this now the one thing we're going to have to do also is add an asset layer because i believe these are hidden and so that means that we're going to have to go down to our sprites bring down this guy and i'm just going to pull him in and i'm going to hide our instances here i'm going to grab this guy and just pull him roughly across off one so that's all right okay now if we hit f5 let's see if we can get past this wall or if our collision code is working correctly so if i go over here and now i go down you can see that we can't pass the wall so let's try on the left working let's try up that's working and finally the right nice so our collision code is perfectly in place now the one thing that you probably saw in the preview is our character is always random so let's actually get that working before we end the tutorial we're going to close our game let's close down the test character here and what we're going to do is let's go and look for an object here what we're going to use is the object in it so in this create event we kind of have a couple of things here we have points bullets mana max and you can see that they're all using a global variable so that just means we can use them room for room and we don't have to initialize them they're already done for us the other thing i want to point out is we're using randomize here at the start so we won't use the same seed every time we'll actually get a different character when we hit f5 or we play our game so what we're going to do is we're going to call a script that is going to generate our character for us so we're going to call the skip generate random character so that means that we are going to come down here to scripts and you can see that we don't have this right now so let's right click say create and let's create a new script and let's call this generate random character now you should see that automatically the game maker has changed our function name for us so if it doesn't make sure you change it or else we'll run into problems in the end so how these sprites are set up and i believe i found them on open game art if we check out the actual sprite itself you can see that we have body we have clothes and then we have hair if we open the body you can see that it's a simple animation so this means that we can choose between the brown skin color or the white skin color the clothes we have different clothes here we have a green cloak we have some medieval clothes we also have a red cloak and if you hit play you can see it's just the clothes walking now if we look at the hair you can see that we have different hairstyles and different colors so what we want to do is kind of choose some of this information and we're going to store it in a global variable so let's switch back to our functions let's make sure we close everything but this function let's start working on those global variables 
Now for the character skin, we're gonna use a global character skin, and we're just gonna say choose between the body black and body white. So once again, Game Maker will randomly choose one of these sprites, and that's what we're gonna be using in the end. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for the clothes, and we're gonna do the same thing for hair. So I'm gonna paste in what I have here. And you can see that now we have a global variable for the character clothes where we can either have no clothes or we can have those clothes that we were talking about, such as the green cloak, the medieval blue look or the red cloak. Then finally, we're doing the same thing for the hair. So we can either have hair and then choose the style itself. Now, the only difference with the hair is, is the hair has eight frames of different colors. So what we should do is we should also make a variable for the hair color. So underneath the character hair, we'll make a new global variable called character hair color, which will just be a random range between zero and seven, making sure that we're using an integer value. Once again, zero to seven is because if we open up one of these sprites, you can see that we do, well, we have eight frames, but it starts at one. So we have seven frames of different colors and we're just gonna choose one of them. So the last thing we need to do is if we are calling this particular function, Let's make sure we're calling it in the init object. We'll make sure we are calling it. So we are calling it here. So what we need to do is load up our character and let's switch over to the draw event. So right now we're just drawing the self. So that's whatever sprite we set here. What we need to do is we need to draw the body, the hair and the clothes. So let's make some comments. So we have body, hair and clothes. So what we're gonna be using is a draw sprite extended and we are going to be using the global variables for the character skin we are going to be using the image index so that's the current frame at the x and y position of this object using the image x scale and image y scale now we don't need any rotation we're going to make sure that we draw it with a white color and we're going to use the image alpha value which is based on the sprite itself now let's copy this for the hair and let's paste it in for the clothes. And we're gonna actually just change it up a tiny bit here. For the hair, the first thing we need to do is we need to change the variable to the character hair. And then we need to make sure that we actually have some character hair. So if the global variable character hair does not equal no one, then we know that we wanna come here in here and actually draw the sprite. Now we don't want to use the image index. Remember we have different character hair values for the color and then the rest we can leave the same. And we're going to do the same with the character clothes. And we also need to make sure that we are going to draw some clothes. So we'll make sure that it does not equal no one. And then the rest can actually be left all the same. Okay, so let's hit F5 and see what our character looks like now. Once the game runs, you can see we kind of have this old guy. He's got some hair. Let's close our game and hit F5 again. Let's make sure we get a different character. Awesome, we have a nude person. Well, you can see that our character is moving around. They are looking at the mouse. Our collision is working and we have some random characterization happening. Thank you for watching. This video's free game is called Grid and you can download it using the link text I found on the screen. A special shout out to the following, Andrea, Robert, Jujub84, Victor, Ashby, Jesus, Annie, Edward, Manuel, Paul, and Vil. Thank you guys and girls so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like the full source code to this game and other benefits, please check out my Patreon page. Once again, thank you very much.